Good morning. I'm Pastor Lolita Cows. I'm one of the co-lead pastors here at Madisonville First United Methodist Church, and it is a joy to be here today. Whether you're here, whether you're joining us online, I know we got a lot of people on spring break um, coming back today, and I hope that everybody's having safe travels. But wherever we are, I pray that you feel the presence of God in this place. Before we get started with worship and greeting and things, I just wanted to remark, you might notice these two new black things hanging on the wall right now. These are actually LED screens. Um, a few weeks ago, our official full projector went died on us, and we've had a fix in place that's been waiting for the installation of these screens. They're not done yet. But uh, we're hoping, and um, you know, knock on wood, that we'll finish the installation this coming week, all of this stuff. But I just wanted to point those out to you, that that's what these black things are, um, and that we, will, we hope to be using them in the next week. If, um, and, and they look phenomenal when they're turned on. We've seen them just test them, and they look great. Um, but it, we are looking forward to that um, here. I'm glad to be here, though. I'm glad that we continue to worship God, even when we've had to fix the screen the way that it is, even though we have many things that we've had to do. And, and we had a wonderful celebration of Easter last week. But the joy of being here with each and every one of you today, that makes my heart happy. And I just pray that we feel God's presence. So let's pray as we begin worship. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for these beautiful, amazing people. And I just pray that as we continue to worship you today, that your spirit will fall upon us, that we will be filled and that we will be filled to overflowing so that others may come to know you because of what you've done in our lives and our willingness to share it. So Lord, come and be with us today, we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand and to greet one another in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Good morning. It is wonderful to see everybody this morning. Thank you for joining us and thank you for joining us online. It's time to move into our time of worship through song now. And as this first song sings, come now is the time to worship. So sing with us.
now to this time of prayer in our service and where we lift up that which is on our hearts and that which is on our minds. Uh, Nine o'clock today we had the great gift of Hannah Hunley being able to be with us just for worship. Uh, Hannah Hunley is uh, someone is someone who grew up in this church but also is someone who currently spends most of the time in Guatemala serving as the director of the Amor Gracias school there which many of us support. Um, and we have supported through many of our mission offerings over the years. And she was here this morning just to worship. And it was just a reminder to us of the great gift that we have uh, to be able to partner with so many people and to be in ministry around the world and to share in that. And, and I know that she greatly appreciates uh, the support of her church family and the work that's being done there to touch so many lives of children preschool through sixth grade. And just a reminder of the great gift that we have as the body of Christ to be able to lift one another up through our prayers that we can't be there every single day to do the work alongside of Hannah. We can uplift her through our prayers. And there are so many other people in our community that are doing amazing, beautiful work. And even people sitting here in this sanctuary or watching online that each and every day you're doing God's work. And what a gift that it is for the body of Christ to be able to say, we see you. We love you. We love what God is doing in you. And we get a chance to pray for one another for that today. So let's pray together. Lord, I'm so thankful for this time. I'm thankful for this community. I'm thankful that we are a people who is about proclaiming your glory and your love and your power that is greater than anything, greater than death itself. And as we find ourselves in the season of Easter, the season where we are reminded that the rising from the dead, it just didn't happen in one day, but that you continue to appear and that your presence, Lord, is with us even now in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we are so thankful for you and for what you've done for us. And we admit that we don't always live lives of gratitude. We don't always seek to live for you in all that we say and do, that we mess up all the time. So forgive us, Lord, and by your grace at work in our lives, help us to live for you today, to see the places where we can serve and witness to your love, 
to be a beacon of hope for those who need to know this. To know you. And Lord, we come today with just so much stuff. Every single one of us in our lives, we have things that burden us. We have situations that frighten us. We even have things that excite us and, and we're looking forward to in the days and weeks and months to come. And because we have all of these things on our hearts, Lord, we just ask that in this time of silence, you receive that which we have, the cries and the longings and the prayers of our hearts now. We are so thankful that you are not a God who is distant from us or what we face, but you're right here. And you hear our prayers. And we know and we're trusting that these aren't empty words, that you're receiving them and you're doing something about them. And though we may not see it or understand it, we trust that you're doing something about them, and we, Lord, are going to trust you and your will and your ways. Give us the eyes to see you, the boldness to walk in your steps. And Lord, we want to see your glory. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and all that he has done for us, both in the witness of his life, the sacrifice of his death, and the power of his resurrection that shows us the kind of lives that we can live and the kind of hope that we have. We love you, Lord. And we, together as the body of Christ, with our many gifts, with our many talents, with the many callings and places that you place us, we come together now and we join our voices together to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In our worship service today, um, and as we're preparing for the children's moment, this is a great time for you. Uh, right next to you in the pews, there's an attendance pad. And this is a time for you to fill that out and let us know that you're here with us today. It is a, you are a gift to us. You really are. And we're thankful for you to be here. And this is just a way for us to acknowledge, hey, you're here. We see you. We care about you. And we're glad that you're worshiping with us today. So please take a moment to do that. month we are going to be talking about one of the fruit of the spirit a specific one that's really hard for me patience it is in proverbs 14 29 that it is written whoever is slow to anger has great understanding but one who has a quick temper they are quick to reveal how foolish they are and we can all be foolish sometimes so today as we pray will you join me in making a heart over yours 
God, we thank you that you love us so much that you are patient with us. We thank you that you are quick to forgive us and slow to anger. Help us to be more like that so that we can show others around us what you are truly like, that you are patient and kind, and that you will forgive them for anything that they do that separates them from you. We want to show your love to those around us, that we can be good witnesses of what you are truly like. And we ask for your forgiveness when we fail at that. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Now it's time to set away sacred circle. God the creator. God the son. And God the Holy Spirit. If you're interested in joining us for Children's Church, you can join us in room 222 upstairs. This season between Resurrection Sunday and Pentecost is the season of Easter, these seven weeks, where we know and celebrate that Jesus is alive and still making a profound difference in our world, in our lives, in our communities. That Jesus is alive and making all the difference in the world. In the Gospel of Luke, on its account of Easter Sunday, we get the story of the women at the tomb in the morning. In the afternoon and early evening, we get the story of Jesus showing up with some believers on the walk towards Emmaus. And then after that, in the evening, Jesus shows up to his disciples, a surprise as they're eating together. We're going to read that story from Easter Sunday today from Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 49. Luke 24, 36 through 49. Will you hear the word of the Lord? While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Yet for all their joy, they were still disbelieving and wandering. And he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we know that you are here with us in this time of worship. As we have gathered in your name, you have promised to be present. And may your presence among us speak to our joy, speak to those places in our hearts where we're still disbelieving and wandering. And may, as you did for the disciples so long ago, may you open our minds to understand the scriptures in all that you are doing. Continue to meet with us, speak to us, transform us, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. 
Now, Jesus in this passage from Easter Sunday evening is doing what a lot of us are going to do in about an hour. Dramatic effects we have now. Pay no, pay no mind. A little, little symbol action. Jesus in our scripture passage today is doing what so many of us are going to be doing in a half an hour or so, and that is eating fish, right? Jesus in this story, as he is proving to them that he is really alive and not a ghost, eats with them at their fish dinner. Now the scripture says that it's broiled fish. I'm guessing they just hadn't made it to the ecstasy that we've made it to in the South and known how to fry things yet, but they are eating fish together when Jesus shows up, and if you'll stay to eat, so shall we. Now, being around at church my whole life, I've been around a fish fry or two, and not just here. I remember as a teenager making my parents take me to the fish fry at the Sardis Chapel United Methodist Church because they had really good fried fish and really good fried peppers, which I thought was the best thing ever. I remember every Friday in Lent going to Pastor Lolita's First Church Trinity United Methodist in Covington, Kentucky for their Lenten fish fries and having to help out and serve fish and see all the people eating fish. And of course, we'll have some good fish just to eat here in a little while. But there is one fish fry that I'm glad that I missed out on as much as I like fried fish. When I was a senior in high school, there was a fish fry on the other side of the county that I grew up in. It was at the Volunteer Fire Department in a very unfortunately named community called Stab. And at the fish fry at the Stab Volunteer Fire Department, I guess it was a fundraiser and a political event, and the sheriff was there campaigning to be reelected to a fifth term. He was a pretty famous guy. He drove his helicopter around looking for drugs and was on America's Most Wanted and all of those things. But that night, after the fish fry, as the sheriff was going to his car, somebody shot him, and he died. And suddenly, all the people who had just come out to eat fish at the fish fry found themselves as witnesses to a crime. They had come expecting to socialize and to eat, and they left as witnesses also witnesses in the legal sense, people who could be called upon to testify to a crime that they had seen. Now in our scripture passage today, as the disciples have gathered to socialize and they've gathered to eat fish, they leave from that fish dinner as well being told from that fish dinner as well, being told by Jesus that they are witnesses of these things that they have seen. But they are not witnesses, like those folks at the fish fry in Stab, of a crime. But rather they are witnesses of something just the opposite of a crime. They are witnesses to the fact that Jesus is alive and well, that Jesus, who they saw dead just a few days earlier, is alive, and that God is at work reversing death itself. God is at work doing the opposite of crime, but doing reconciliation and healing for the world, that God is at work making all things new, and that even death isn't a barrier to that you are my witnesses of these things, Jesus says. They come to eat and to talk. And they leave as witnesses to this great reversal that God is doing that is turning brokenness into wholeness, sin into faithfulness, guilt into forgiveness, and death into life. 
Now, despite the fact that the risen Jesus shows up in their midst and he shows them the places where he's been crucified on his hands and his side, it seems like they still don't really get it all the way, do they? In verse 41, it says, Yet for all their joy, all their joy, they were still disbelieving and wandering. They were still disbelieving and wandering. They weren't quite sure. They weren't quite sure that they were all in on this believing in Jesus business because, well, it's mind-blowing, right? Dead people don't come back. All the things they thought they knew about the world were changed. Death was turning into life. But it seems like in our scripture, the thing that changes their minds, the thing that gets them out of their place and disbelieving into wandering is the proof that Jesus gives them when he eats that fish. When they see that he's really alive, that he's not some ghost, but he is there eating with them, being with them. For all their joy, they were still disbelieving and wondering, and he said to them, have you anything here to eat? Now, have you ever been in that position? Not hungry, I know you've all been hungry. But have you ever been in that position where you have joy, where maybe you have celebrated Easter with joy, but still... On Monday and Tuesday and Saturday, you're doing a little bit of disbelieving and wandering. Have you ever been in that place where you can call out with that gentleman that Jesus runs into, I do believe, help my unbelief. We're all in this position at one time or in some places in our lives where everything seems a little too good to be true about what God is doing and we still have this disbelieving, this wandering about us. Have you had that experience? But have you also had that experience where something happens? Something happens and Jesus shows himself to you. Maybe it's something as simple as it was for the disciples when they see him eat fish. Maybe it was a high moment on a spiritual retreat. Maybe it was just a moment that was pretty ordinary except that everything clicked for you and it all made sense Have you had those moments where your disbelieving and your wandering turned fully into joy and you knew that God was at work there in powerful and wonderful ways? Where you were all in and you could move past the doubt and the wandering and towards being a witness, a witness to this thing that God is doing in the world, this great reversal of turning death into life, brokenness into wholeness, sin into faithfulness. Have you had that all in experience where you are sure of who Jesus is and that he's alive and with you? Now, to be fair, for the disciples, it's not just Jesus eating the fish as much as I'm trying to get you hungry for lunch. That proves what Jesus, who Jesus is. Rather, in verse 45, it says that then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And we need this Two. The disciples knew the scriptures that they had. They knew the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, backwards and forwards. They knew what was written, but they needed something more. They needed their minds opened by God's presence in their midst in Jesus Christ for them to really understand the scriptures. They needed their minds opened to understand the scriptures. And so it is for us as well. We can read the Bible day in and day out. We can take what other people tell us is in the Bible. We can hold on to it, but the Bible isn't of much use unless we let Jesus open our minds to understand it, unless we let 
the Holy Spirit that inspired us speak to us and inspire us again. We need this. When we read the scriptures, we need to come with the idea that Jesus is going to speak to us. We need to come seeking understanding that we can understand not just what is written in the verse that we're reading, but the general message of the whole scriptures. So we can understand what it is that God is trying to tell us this message of God's love for humanity, of humanity's fallenness and rebellion and brokenness, of God's pursuing humanity And even coming to us in the person of Jesus Christ and showing us the way, rescuing us from sin and death by the power of the cross and the resurrection and giving us new life and empowering us by the Holy Spirit to grow God's kingdom here. We need the Holy Spirit. We need Jesus to open up our minds so we can understand the scripture because sometimes reading just isn't enough. And when we allow Jesus to open our minds to understand the scriptures, when we look for that general message of the Bible, then we can read the rest of the scriptures, the things that are difficult. We can read them in context. We can read them within the light of what God is doing. We can read them with our ears open for the Holy Spirit to speak to us, to change us. Now, there's one thing about being able to have our minds open to understand the scriptures. The disciples that day don't do much. Rather, they let Jesus do it. But what they are is present. They're in the right place at the right time to have Jesus open the scriptures to their understanding. And so it is with us. We have to make the effort to be present in the right places at the right times. We have to actually read the Bible. We have to listen for the voices of others in the church and the church's tradition to help us understand. We've got to show up to the Sunday school class or the disciple Bible study or the small group or the ministry that we're involved in. We have to be present for Jesus to be able to speak to us and help us to understand the scriptures to open our minds. Man, we're having problems today. I'll catch up with myself in just a moment. I get real distracted. Anyways, we see and we experience God. And when we see and experience God, when we understand the scriptures, then the things that Jesus talks about will start to happen. Y'all don't need to hear those sounds. All right. What Jesus talks about in the following verses when he says, verse 47, that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed to all nations. Repentance is simply that word that we used before in the original language. It's a reversal. It's to turn and be going one direction and turn and go the other way. To have things reversed in your life where you're going a different direction. And in this we see that God, the God who is reversing death into life, sin into faithfulness, brokenness into wholeness, is not only doing those things in the whole world, but God is doing those things in our hearts, in our lives, in our minds as well, that God is doing that. And so we turn away from our sin. We turn away from our brokenness. We turn away from our rebellion and we turn towards God. We let ourselves be a part of this great reversal and in doing so we help others to see as well. Repentance and the forgiveness of sins. We know about forgiveness, right? We know what the Bible says about forgiveness. We know that there is forgiveness in Jesus. But sometimes we have a hard time experiencing it, don't we? We have a hard time feeling that guilt removed from our lives, feeling that shame taken from us, believing that God can and will use us despite what we've done. Sometimes we have a hard time with experiencing forgiveness. But if Jesus can still show up and be in the midst 
and eat fish with these guys who were supposed to be his friends, who didn't show up for him when he was having his worst day ever, who, apart from John, weren't there with him at the cross, who had deserted him and abandoned him. If Jesus resurrected can show up and be in their midst and say, peace be with you and eat fish with them, then God can forgive whatever it is that you've done or you've left undone as well. And that forgiveness and that power and that freedom that comes with it. It's part of the pro- a part of the process, a part of this great reversal that God promises. Repentance, forgiveness proclaimed for all nations or for all people. You see, God's not just satisfied at changing your life or changing my life or changing some people's lives 2,000 years ago in Palestine. God is at reaching the whole world. That this great reversal of death into life would take effect everywhere in everybody's life. That this forgiveness, that this change, that this healing of the world would be something that is for everyone. And Jesus calling us to be witnesses, Jesus' call on us to be witnesses is that we might be witnesses to everyone. Friends, if somebody's still alive, they're still breathing, they still got a pulse, it doesn't matter who they are, where they are, what they've done, how much you don't like them or how much you don't care that they exist, God is still working on them. God's grace is still... saying I guess so we'll just wrap it up simply right that God is at work in our midst that this living Jesus wants us to be a part of this great reversal that changes everything wants us to be witnesses you know if uh If you, like those people that day, if you witnessed a crime, if you saw an injustice being committed, if called upon, I bet, to right that injustice, you would go to court and testify, wouldn't you? Because you care about things being made right and doing the right thing. If you saw a crime, you'd go testify. Now, friends...
And so we come to the table today. We come to meet our risen Savior. It's the very presence of Christ with us. Christ told us, I'll be with you. To look towards this day where this simple meal of a little bit of bread and juice is an example of what God is going to continue to do in us forevermore. And so we come to this looking at the future of what God is going to do in us with the power of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives, but we also come looking back as well. Looking back and remembering that on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to God and he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And after the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to God and he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so we remember these mighty acts in Jesus Christ and we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving believing that God is going to continue to do a beautiful work in our lives. And that God will do this in ways where we can witness to what we have seen, what we have known, what we have felt, and the love that surrounds us. And so, Holy Spirit, fall upon us and upon these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Unite us together in your ministry, Lord. Unite us together with you, our Lord and our Savior, that the world may come to know and that all will come to feast at your heavenly banquet. For all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We'll be taking communion by intinction today. And so you'll be given a piece of bread and you'll dip it into the juice and you'll take the bread and the juice together. We also offer individual servings of the, uh, of the bread and the juice as well as gluten-free for those who need to receive in this way. We want no hindrance for anyone to come to the table. So all are welcome, all who seek to love God, to live in peace with God and with one another, you're welcome at this table. This is not my table, the church's table, it is the Lord's table. And the Lord invites all to come and receive this power and this grace and this love. So um, as you're coming forward today, you'll be able to receive. We invite you to come and to kneel and to pray at the altar. Perhaps you need to continue that prayer that Pastor John was saying, okay, Lord, I'm open. Let me receive your spirit today so I can witness this is also a time that we can continue to respond. So you can respond by asking for the Holy Spirit to use you. You can also respond through your gifts as the baskets are here and the gifts of God's people that are about transforming work here in our community and around the world and how the Spirit uses that to do beautiful things as well. Things that even surprise us every single day. So I invite those who are assisting to come. And then you can come as you desire. We'll be just over here.
us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. And yeah, we don't know how you do things sometimes. Sometimes we just can't figure you out. But we're trusting you today that your presence will be with us and you'll show us and we will be able to witness to what we have seen and known and believed by that power at work in us. Amen. So it seems like my mind gets a little bit more stable than Pastor John's day, so I'm going to just kind of continue to finish things off for us. But um, just as a reminder of all the many ways that we can be a part of what God is doing, and one of those is just through community in general. Remember the disciples One of the greatest gifts they gave to Jesus, just being present, was being there and showing up even when they didn't know. And so today, you got a fish fry you can go to. I'm sure it's going to be delicious because it has been in the past. It's at noon. It is free. You can come. Please come and enjoy the fellowship around the table and this time together in the good food. Uh, Also, this coming Saturday, April 13th, we've got a work day at Camp Lucon happening. So anyone is welcome to come. They're going to meet about 7.30 a.m. and get back around 5 p.m. Lunch is provided, and you just need to contact the church office, or if you happen to know Amy Wortham, who's the chair of our missions team, um, you can contact her as well. But you can always call the church office tomorrow so we can know how many people and let them know how many people. This is for all skill levels, all skill levels. There is something for everybody to do, whether all you think you can do is like maybe pick up a stick all the way to I can maybe build something. There will be something for you to do there. So I encourage you to go and to support this great ministry of our church, of the United Methodist Church here in Kentucky. But through Wednesday Night Alive, through other ways, we know that there are places for you to come, for us, for you to know community, and for you to know a place to serve as well. So brothers and sisters in Christ, go now to serve God and your neighbor in all you do. 
And may the blessings and peace of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. May you be excited to tell about what God has done when you return to this place. Amen.